In this tutorial, we will take a look at creating number and currency columns for a SharePoint list. The difference between a number column and a currency column is the display format of the values in the column. Number columns display values with a thousand separator like you see here in the monthly car miles column. Currency columns display values with a thousand separator and a currency symbol as seen in the mileage expense column. Both let you choose the number of decimal places to display. When values are stored in a number or currency column, they can be used in calculations as seen here in this example, displaying an average for the car miles column and a total for the mileage expense column. I will demonstrate creating and using these column types with the fundraising events on the Human Resources site. My list currently provides columns to record information about each of the events, such as event name, location, date, and time of the event. I will add two more columns to this list. The first column will record the number of people that attended each event. For this, I will add a number column titled Attendance. To add this new column, I'll click on the List tab and then Create Column. First, enter the name for the column, which will be Attendance and for the type of column it will be a number column. I will not require that this column is filled in since I won't know the attendance until after the event takes place. The Enforce Unique Values option will require that each number entered in this column must be unique. This option is not applicable to this list so I'll leave this at no. The Minimum and Maximum Value option can be used to limit the range of numbers that can be entered in this column. This is not applicable to this list either, so I'll leave them blank. And here I can specify the number of decimal places to display with the numbers. Automatic displays the values in the column exactly as they were entered. Or I can click the drop down and select 0 through 5 to display the values with the selected number of decimal places. For number of attendees, there shouldn't be any decimal places, so I'll select 0. The default value option lets you specify a number to be automatically filled in the field each time a new item is added to the list. This option doesn't apply to this list, so I'll leave it blank. The Show as Percentage option would format values in this column as percentages. So for example, if the value in this column was 0.15, it would be displayed as 15%. That's not applicable to this list, so I won't select it. And the last option to add this column to the default view, I'll select yes because I do want this column added to display with the list. And then I'll choose OK to save the settings. And you can see the attendance column was added to the far right of the list. Next I will add a currency column to record the cost of each event. So to add this column, the list tab ribbon is already displayed, so I'll click on create column. The name of the column is Fee. It is a currency column. And I want two decimal places to display for this. With a currency column, you have a currency format option. It defaults to United States. You can see if I click the arrow, it pops up all the different choices here. And then I'll select OK to save. To demonstrate entering values in these columns, I'll edit the first event. You see the two new fields added at the bottom of the form here for attendance and fee. So first I'll enter the attendance. And because the format is built in with the column type, it's not necessary to enter the values with commas or currency symbols. So I'll enter the attendance as 1016 and the fee is $25, which I'll just enter as 25. And I'll click Save. And when displayed in the list, you'll see the values or have the commas and the dollar sign. A benefit of using number and currency columns is the ability to add column total, such as a sum or average, as you saw in the first example. To demonstrate how to add these column totals, I'll first fill in the rest of the column here with the attendance and fees for the remaining events. So I've finished filling in the numbers for the rest of the events. Now I will add a sum to the attendance column and an average to the fee column. To add these column calculations, we need to modify the list view. 
So up in the top ribbon here, I'll click on Modify View. And then I'll scroll down towards the bottom. Click the plus next to Totals. All the column names display, and to the right of each column is a drop-down where you can select the type of column calculation to display. For non-numeric columns, such as event name, you can select to count the number of entries in that column. So what we want to do is for the attendance, we want to calculate a sum, and for the fee column, we're going to calculate an average. And then I'll scroll to the bottom and choose OK. And then you'll see below the column headings displays the column sum, and for fee it displays the column average. As new events are added to this list, the sum and the average would automatically recalculate. Another benefit of using number and currency columns is that they can be referenced as part of a calculated column. For more information, please review the training video titled Creating Calculated Columns. So here you have seen an example of how number and currency columns make it easy to store values that will automatically display formatted and provide the ability to calculate with those values.